Welcome to Excel 2013. I'm going to warm you up on some basic tasks. You can even Google basic tasks in Excel 2013 and you should find a website, Microsoft's official website, which guides you through some of the ideas today. So to create a new workbook, we're going to go to File, click on the File tab here, and go to New. You can even press Control N. And then click on the blank workbook. And you can see a new book opens up. And what I've done here is I've made these cells larger. So I'm going to show you how to do that. These are a little bit small for the video. So I'm going to just move this window over by clicking on the top here, dragging it over, and clicking on this nice X button here to close it. So that's gone. Now how in the world did I get these cells, these little tiny boxes, bigger? What I did is I highlighted these columns. In fact, you can highlight all the columns by clicking on this top corner here. This top corner here actually highlights everything. In fact, you can even press Control A to highlight everything. With everything selected, I'm going to right click the column and choose column width. What I have here is a column width of 15. That's how it became nice and wide. And you can even change the row. If I right click the, the numbers here, the row height, for example, can be even set to, let's say, 50. Click on press enter. You can see that the rows are much taller and these cells are nice and big. If you press Control Z, you can undo what you just did and come back to the way you were. All right, so we have this nice new workbook. Okay, say you had three businesses. We'll just call this business A. Enter. We'll call this business. You can even click up here in the formula bar. Business B and business C. You can see that this text here, business ABC, is a little bit past column A. It actually cuts into col column B. Columns run, run up and down. And to fix that very quickly, just double click between A and B. You can see that the column automatically adjusts. If you click in between columns, you can see this nice double arrow. Click hold and you can make it wider as well as you can make it smaller. But the fast way to do it is just to double click between A and B. Pa -pow. You can see right away, you can see this is a nice column width. We'll say your first business made $20,000 a year and your second business made $100,000 and your third business made, we'll just say, $40,000. Now, if you want to find the sum of a bunch of numbers, which is very useful, especially when you're adding up amounts, you can click on this cell here below this these other numbers and click on the auto sum button. This here is the sigma notation. It means you're adding numbers up. I'm just going to click on auto sum. Pow. You can see by default we have the formula equals sum B1. This is column B. They run up and down. Row 1, colon, which means all the way until B3, which is column B, row 3. Press enter. So you can see here the sum is 160,000. Also notice how the formula here is in the formula bar, equals sum B1 colon B3. Press escape if you, ever, if you ever accidentally make a mistake. You can see that everything is normal. You can even click on this nice cell, press delete. And if we really wanted to, you can even type in the formula directly, equals sum bracket click, drag all the way down. This is the range of information that we want to add up. You can even have a closing bracket here. This is optional. You don't even have to do that. And press enter. So what we've done here is we've used a formula to find the sum of these three numbers. Let's press delete and try it one more time. Rather than memorizing the formula with an equal sign, I'm just going to click on this nice sigma button called auto sum. If you hit the nice drop down box, you can even see, you can find the average and other things as well. So right now we're interested in the sum. So we're just going to hit that button and press enter. Let's finish off this basic task in Excel 2013 with one last idea. The idea of a simple formula. We can type in equals 2 plus 3. Can you guess the result? 2 plus 3 is 5. So Excel here, besides all the pretty graphs, 
it is known as a super duper powerful calculator. So when you type into the formula bar equals 2 plus 3, the result is 5. I'm going to click over here in this cell, C6. I'm going to type in equals 7 minus 1. Can you guess what the result's going to be when I press enter? If you guess 6, great job. Let's try clicking over here on F3. Equals 3 times 2. Star means times. This is the asterisk symbol. It's commonly used in computers as the multiplication symbol. Equals 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. Very good. So let's click over here on cell E7. Equals 9 divided by 2. Hmm, what's going to happen? I'm going to press enter. And yes, if you guess 4.5, that's what we got. Excellent job. All right, let's finish off this video by tricking you. I'm going to type in equals 2 plus 2 star 2. What's the result? If you said 8, that's wrong. Remember, Excel is a calculator. It respects math rules. And the math rules is that you need to multiply before you add. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 2 should be 6. Press enter. And this is awesome. We have 6. Stay tuned for the next video.